Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution, the show where all the revolutionaries meet and discuss politics in these United States. Hey, we got Rosanna, Michael, Anita, and Mr. Scott out there in the woods again. Hey, everybody's doing okay this week? We're doing fine. Pretty well. All right, all right. and uh, Columbus, you got, it's a windy day. Windy day in Columbus, yep, uh, but the electricity is hanging on for now, so we'll see. All right, well, let the sun shine on. And uh, and Scott, I, you got some blue skies up there in upstate New York. Uh, a little overcast now, but but generally beautiful. Yesterday was sunny and, and 75. Uh, is, is that a lake behind you? You look like you're in Youngstown, up by Lake Newport. It is a, it is a lake. Um, nice. On the other side of the lake is the campus of Cornell University. Um, Cornell, okay. Well, you're uh, not in Youngstown, man, because we don't have uh, Cornell. Yet. We have Youngstown State, the Penguins. Yay, Penguins, go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's been one hell of a week again. Uh, there's a big debate around the border, and and they appointed uh, the vice president, uh, Sister Harris, as uh, the coordinator. I'm not sure that that's a good thing. I mean, I mean that's a tough job, Rosanna, for uh the vice president i wouldn't want it i mean you yeah. know because how do you I, how do you I, I want to encourage everybody to read emile's article that should be posted pretty soon mm. on the on the crisis of the border where he points out that the crisis of the border is not really the 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 crisis at the border but it's the crisis that's happening all over the world that brings mm. that forces people to leave their homeland and and migrate and things like that. And uh, I think he makes some really good points. So hmm. yeah, I think okay. they, they always that a people's piece. world. That should be out of people's world, yeah. All right. Email Shepherds, check out his article at peoplesworld.org. Mm -hmm. I thought we would talk a little bit this morning. We're preparing for a meeting of our national committee taking place on the 18th. And we're, we're talking about party building problems of party building, because the party is being built, it's growing. Problems of party growth more uh, properly. We have about, I don't know, 2,000, two or 300. Uh, since Bernie dropped out of the race last April, so it's going on a year now, and uh, we've doubled our dues, uh, but uh, it's not all smooth sailing, uh, Rosanna. It's, uh, it's a tough haul. And we've got new club. You guys are preparing a report for the. <clears throat> yeah, we're yes, we're preparing a, a report and analysis of some of the experiences that are happening throughout the country with the growth, some of the challenges, and and finding ways to tighten up. How do we tighten it up, tighten it up so that uh, we meet the new challenge, which is always what communists do. You know, we have to make. Mm -hmm. constant adaptations based on our conditions. So uh, we're working on that. Um, we had a meeting yesterday where we sort of hashed out some of the things and uh, should be a good report. So Anita, do you have to, um, you're a club leader and a district leader. Um, in Columbus, is the party growing? And are you able to, uh, like if you, disappear tomorrow, God forbid, and you move to Anchorage, would mm -hmm. the club still continue to grow? Yes. I mean, even I, function? I think it will function. We, we have a, a kind of an infrastructure built of, you know, based in the last year on Zoom, um, but, but we also, you know, had in place before that uh, methods of, of meeting each other um, at least uh, we meet every other week. So we meet regularly. And I think that's what draws the, the uh, members to the club meeting is that they are familiar with each other and they get to see each other. So um, I think it would function. Um, there's a, a number of young people who are really able and, and, uh, and willing and, and committed to, uh, to seeing the party project, you know, continue. So yeah, it'll work. It would work. Okay. But you have problems in other parts of the state in consolidating the club. Well, that's true. And we also have, I mean, we have, we have um, comrades in Columbus, too, who just don't show up for things. Um, they uh, put their name forward, and um, sometimes it's hard to reach them. Sometimes there's so many multiple ways of reaching them, it's, it's hard. But 
Um, now, uh, with with um, again with Zoom, I uh, as um, from Columbus, I'm able to meet with the Dayton Club once a month and the Cincinnati Club once a month and Cleveland once a month. So we're really we're on a roll that way, I think. Okay, that's that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Looking, but uh, uh, Michael, um, in your experience, if if you were to disappear and move to Santo Domingo uh, uh, tomorrow, would the uh, collective of young communists that you're working with, you're not the head of it, but you're a key part of it, would it continue to function? I think it will, it, re it really would. Um, I'm impressed more and more every day of the amount of people who sign up, not just online, um, you know, cpusa.org if you're interested and you're listening, but also in person as we're doing our mutual aid events or our tabling events out in the streets, going to protests, we constantly have to have a table or a clipboard there because people come up and say, oh, I want to join. I, I like what you guys are saying. I like, you know, your banner. I want to be a part of whatever this is. Um, and I agree with Anita, there are many people, and this is just part of being any organization or, you know, building a mass party, you're going to have a lot of people who have busy schedules and, you know, they can't contribute their whole life to the Communist Party. We understand that we're a working class party. Uh, we understand people have school and work and whatnot. Um, but I, I, I was really inspired. I heard a report, um, I think it was from the French party years ago, and they said, you know, in this tiny town, you know, in the outskirts of uh, Paris, we have, you know, uh, 100 communists, 100 party members. But in that community, we have many hundreds more who vote for the communists or, or who are loosely affiliated with it. And so we appreciate you know, all the support and uh, members. So if you're considering joining the communist party or being active uh, with the Young Communist League in your area, uh, don't think that you know we expect you to be out there every day, but be involved in any uh, capacity that you can. But Scott, what is it? Uh, I mean, we're trying to build a mass party and at the same time, I hear Rosanna talking about the need to tighten up. So how do you manage, uh, on the one hand, um, having the discipline of, of functioning and at the same time having a mass approach? Because, you know, in, in America, this is America. This is not some other place. And when people join a party, they join the Democrats, they just register and they vote. Republicans register and vote. But in the Communist Party, you're looking for something else or maybe not. Um, well, I think that's really the, the question that we're, we're trying to figure out. Um, and it, it makes me think of the, something Lenin said um, in, uh, something Lenin said in, I forget which one of his writings, but he said, it, it's not that we don't have the people to do the work. It's that we don't have the work. We don't have work for all the people that need it. Um, and so the, the, I think there's a, a persistent difficulty in when people come into the party, finding them something uh, that they can immediately do uh, to make a contribution. Um, because, you know, this is a, you know, the party has a, a culture, it has a, a certain theoretical understanding, it has a certain way of working. Um, and it takes, for me anyway, it took time to kind of get into that. It took a lot of, you know, um, getting involved on, on different little projects before I started to understand. So finding a way to help people make their way into the work of the party uh, is, I think, the thing that uh, links the, the kind of mass party to the, to the tightening up. I mean, what, what kind of balances between those is when we can get more and more people involved in the work of the party in a way that allows them to take some kind of initiative, but also, you know, keeps them in touch with, you know, with their district, with the national leadership. And then that's a, a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. Rosanna, we found that, uh, you know, we got to change so that we can grow. And that one of the points that I've heard you make is that we need to uh, develop new models of leadership and new standards in the party. Uh, with respect to how people uh, behave and treat each other. Um, is that one of the things, uh, how are we doing in that regard? And, and uh, will we think about this for the national committee meeting? Yeah, I think, I think that's one of the biggest challenges is that you know we come in to the party with all of our preconceived notions about what the Communist Party is, plus we come in with all of the ills of capitalism, 
you know, individualism, uh, uh, all kinds of things that, you know, even I ideas about the Communist Party that ha have we read in the bourgeois press and things like that. So uh, I, one of the things that I really stress is that we have to emulate what we, the kind of society that we're trying to build. And we have to strive to be that person uh, first and foremost. And it's different. It's different than joining a Democratic Republican or any kind of, or even organization, because it really starts with how is our behavior? What is, you know, what is it that we are uh, showing? Because wherever we are, that's where the party is. We don't have to be uh, it the, at the party meeting to be a party member or to be representing the party. No, wherever we are in struggle in our workplace, within our family, they know that we're in the party. Uh, and even when they don't know we're in the party, but we want to emulate that that idea of what we're striving for, to be, what kind of society we're trying to build. So definitely, uh, you know, we need to adopt those, adapt and change to build, to, to emulate that for ourselves. And so that people more and more will say, well, I wanna, I wanna be that, I wanna be a part of this because it, it not just changes the world, but it changes you as well and and it really makes you a happier person because you're you're not you know always um angry and <laughs> all of that kind of stuff you know so we're fighting for a pro-working class and anti-racist and anti-sexist and anti-homophobic spaces in the communist party and we strive to build that in ourselves so anita what do we do when you come across a member who is influenced by racism or sexism. How do y'all, I mean, how do we handle that? Uh, well, very, do you spell them? It's, no, no, we work, we, we have to work with people because people are coming to the party, to their party membership. They're coming, as Rosanna said, from uh, our, our bourgeois society, from, from capitalist culture. And they bring with them some misconceptions about uh, race, class, uh, our party, um, gender. Uh, so we we uh, we have to be patient, and but we have to bring people up to speed and challenge uh, people if we hear comrades if we hear them say something that you know really doesn't um, doesn't mesh with our our values uh, too much. But I think I agree. Um, with Rosanna about the way communists work in society and work in the movement. I think we, we have to be, um, have uh, uh, standards that we conduct ourselves uh, by. I remember when I first joined the party way back when um, there was a, a comrade whose work I admired, whose dedication to her work I admired and, and she was in the party and I looked to her for political leadership and that's how I ended up joining the party in the first place. So. I think uh, Rosanna's right. We have to be the leaders in, in that regard, respect for uh, working class and for each other. So what about um, uh, you find a uh, scholar, a, a, a guy who's influenced by male supremacy. So Anita says we gotta be patient. Uh, so what do we do? I mean, do we, talk to the person? Do we well, there's have a, a, there's create, a create session? How do we handle a, that kind of thing? It's a multi a multi step process based on, you know, comradely behavior and, and collectivity and the, you know, understanding that the, the party can't, like, there is no place for for male supremacy in the Communist Party. So first, it would, um, it depends, you know, if somebody else makes a complaint or if it's something that we you know or a leader of the party notices but it would start by um uh, talking with the person um and you know pointing out to them that that their behavior reflects the influence of male supremacy which is absolutely toxic to you know the struggle for working class power and unity um if if they continue uh to you know, manifest that behavior, or if they refuse to take the steps that, you know, are, are deemed, you know, necessary to demonstrate that they're, they're working to get over it, um, then 
even if they have a leadership role in the party, they can be uh, released from it or, or removed from it. Um, and I think in some very uh, rare cases expelled, I don't think that happens very often at all. Uh, but it's that's the end of a very long process that begins with, because people don't know a lot of the time, right? That their behavior uh, is, is reflecting that influence of white supremacy or male supremacy. And sometimes it's often, it's just enough to say, hey, listen, you know, one comrade to another, hey, listen, um, what you said in there, how you behaved in there was not, you know, was not right. And it's important right. for, for men to, to do that with other men, for uh, white comrades to do that with other white comrades. Uh, it, it's really key. And that takes a little bit of courage and, 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 and a little bit of initiative because, you know, generally we kind of tolerate those kinds of things. You listen to it and you kind of wince and say, oh my God, I can't believe he said that or did that. Uh, but you got to do a little bit more. You got to, you know, tap the per pull the person's coat, tap him on the shoulder and say, yo, that's not the way we do things here. In other words, you got to lead. And Michael, we're trying to uh, build a, a leading party, right? I mean, or, or that's a little bit of a debate, you know, the vanguard party concept. Are we, let's have a lightning round. Are we building a vanguard party, Michael? Well, I go back to Lenin's party of a new type. Um, and I believe in there, in fact, I was reading his, uh, a, a portion of it again, and he was talking about the working class as being the vanguard, which manifests itself in within the party. So we are not a vanguard party without working class unity. It can't be, you know, we can't just say it if the working masses aren't united, right? And so I think, you know, we have to meet workers where they are and not where we want them to be. Okay. What about you? Uh, go ahead. I, I, I think it's always really important to, to remember that we are workers, you know? In the party, there isn't anybody separate from the working, I mean, we're all workers. So, so, uh, so in that sense, you know, we, we, the party is made out of workers, but I agree with Michael that, you know, the Vanguard party is not somebody, somebody that declares itself a Vanguard party. The, the working class has to, has to make that decision, not us. Mm. You have to fight for that leadership. It's just not automatic, you can't declare. Right. But you also have to have the intention, Anita, to lead, no? I mean, to, to do things, to, to, to fight, to, and to, to have the courage to, you know, step to the struggle, no? Absolutely, and I think, I think one thing our party has is, is we, we embrace the, the, the total criticism of capitalism, and we know that communism is the opposite of capitalism, and we're, we're, uh, we recognize that when, when we're fighting capital, capitalism, we have to go to the next step. So, um, so I think we are a revolutionary party, and I think we uh, we are. I, I agree with Michael and Rosanna. I don't think we can. Nobody can declare themselves a vanguard of the the working class, but um, we can just do the you know be our our best uh, revolutionary selves in this in this struggle. Well, you can do it. I mean, you go to any demonstration, you'll see six or seven little different little Trotskyite Maoist groups. I am the vanguard. It is a paper called Workers Vanguard. Scott, I mean, so you can do it, but it don't necessarily make it so, does it? Right. Really to, no, no. And it's, um, I, I really, I like the way Michael kind of uh, posed it. Um, you know, the, the working class uh, is not the only force involved in social change, but it, it needs to be the leader and the center of gravity of the movement uh, for social change all the way you know, up to socialism. And uh, the role of the party is to help the working class become united enough, organized enough, class conscious enough to, to, to take up that role that sort of history has set out for it. Um, and our role as the, you know, are we the vanguard of the, the working class? Yeah, it, the, the movement decides, the class decides, but also our, you know, our behavior in a sense, decides as well. well. You know, communists are called on to be the most active, most committed, most self-sacrificing, most, um, you know, unity building uh, members of, of, 
of the class and the movement and and living up to that is really hard but that's also part of you know us being a a, a vanguard party of the vanguard of the, of the class that leads social change but that's a kind of high uh standard scott i mean most 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 what if i just want to join and pay my dues and write a letter to the editor, participate in my school PTA, maybe get on this. I mean, the most, can we be a mass Michael party and still be the mostest of the mostest? My opinion is, you know, you, you mentioned the, the American concept of joining. You know, you, you go to the Democratic Party or Republican Party website and you click a button. And I've noticed when I call a lot of new members, they're pleasantly surprised that we're calling them and making that contact. But I would say, yes, we can be the Moses of the Moses, but that means having members of all different backgrounds, of all different kinds of work schedules and student schedules and ages, you know, and you know, people have, there's people who are 20 who are joining the party, there are people who are 60 joining the party, uh, people who are retired, people who are just, you know, beginning school or uh, work in the middle of this pandemic, people who are laid off. And I think if you can be active in any capacity, in any capacity, because it is expected of you, you know, that's what we welcome. And only that, you know, you know, this working class unity that we see not only out in the streets and the wider people's movement, but the one that we encourage also internally, I think that's what will get us somewhere. But what if I disagree with the policy? I, 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 don't, I don't like the electoral policy of the, uh, uh, Anita, um, but we got this thing called democratic centralism. Yes, we do. What if I disagree? Well, you can, uh, we have a, a process where up till our, our national convention every four years, we have a pre-convention discussion period when a lot of those um, differences and differences of opinion and perspective can get aired and really discussed very thoroughly. And then at the convention, which is the highest body of the party, we make a decision. We talk it out and then we make a decision. And that decision is, is our uh, policy for the, for until, until it changes in the future. So, um, so that's part of our, our powers in democratic centralism, in unity around what we've decided as a collectivity. Um, I think people have to recognize if they individually disagree with something that's, that's, that's outside the collectivity and they need to just stay with the program, trust the comrades, trust the collective action that, uh, that we've used to get to a decision and uh, go with it. So you mean I'm I think stuck for four years? For four years, I, I, I have to endure. Well, we have inter intermediate bodies too. Our national committee meets uh, four times a year and that, that carries on the, the policies of the party if something has changed in the meantime. And, and then of course our national board meets even more often. So we do have bodies within the party sets, um, a little, uh, you know, uh, distilled from that convention that, um, that do carry on uh, decision-making processes for the party. Well, it sounds like so, we're trying to build something new here. Yes, Rosanna. I, I think what an important question that we should all ask ourselves when we disagree with the collective is what am I missing that the collective is not missing? Mm -hmm. I think that's the starting point mm -hmm. because obviously, you know, if 10 people are voting one direction and you're voting one other direction, then there's something that you're not getting. And I think that has to, you know, it goes back to uh, uh, developing a, a, a collectivity sense of yourself, you know, working collectively, we, you know, shedding that individualism and figuring out you know, okay, what am I missing, you know, or am I not communicating my, my, uh, my understanding of this properly that people are not understanding me or whatever. But I think more than anything, you know, if 10 people are voting it, uh, against what you're saying, then you have to ask yourself, what am I missing first and foremost? Mm -hmm. And I think we can't build anything if we don't respect the collective. There's just no way that we can build anything, any movement, if uh, you you know you're you're working against the collective, and uh, so that that has to be something that you know uh, uh, you have to um, deal with. Well, you got the last word, Robosan. It sounds to me like we're building something new and exciting and bold, 
and we're going to have to dig into this more deeply at the next uh, meeting next Friday and at the National Committee and, and going forward. So this idea that Michael spoke about of a party of a new type, uh, it's uh, really quite something uh, new. And uh, we're going to have to uh, collectively find out uh, in our practice what that uh, means. So until next Friday, stay strong, stay safe, stay in the fight. See y'all next week. Bye, Have everyone. A good one. Bye, bye. 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 Bye.